CDMA cell tower. How does it work? These are the radios. The thing's so empty because there's one unit here. Replace six of them. So there used to be six in here for the three sectors. Right up here. Now the one runs all three sides. And they place terminators to loop back into the new unit. That's why the cabinets were so huge, but not anymore. It's all been shrunk. Over here. This is our data coming in. The C1, these units here are the voice. This one here, this is a CDMA, which would be like Sprint, is for the data. The data is shared out here. This one then talks to the radio right next door, which is right here. This one here then patches out, goes out to the tower. But how does it communicate from the outside world to here? Well, we come over here. These two tabs here are GPS antennas, which help keep the system always precise, and for the handshake to pass over from one phone to another. This here is the generator. Automatically kicks in when the batteries are running low. We got the telco box. What do we have in here? These are AT&T C1 circuits and a fiber net block for a uh, fiber net uh, optical cable and this is where all the sprint connections C1 come from the site to the connection to the switch through C1 line. So all this comes from a central office? Correct. So this is an M2. So this was prior to the one we showed you before which required three units which one before that one, you still had to have one per antenna sector. So these covered at least one sector each. The unit that we showed before actually show, covers all of them. So there's multiple sectors. So each one would handle what? Three antennas in each or? Uh, well, two antennas each. Two antennas each side and three. The other ones handle single frequency, one per, per sector, one per frequency. So on this end, we have pretty much the same thing as on the other side. This is just as a backup. If the unit breaks on that end, this one kicks in. You didn't even know you went down. Not too bad. Now this unit over here, you can't hear because it it's very loud. But it has a little air conditioner right in here. And its sole purpose is to keep the batteries cold or cool because this is an outside cell tower. It's all outside, it's not inside a room. So here the spare batteries would go. Since this tower isn't very congested, doesn't require a lot of uh, a lot of extra batteries. So they're deep cell, low voltage batteries connected in series. Keep the unit running long enough, and here's the little AC unit that keeps it nice and cool with the insulation in place, the paperwork so the batteries never get very hot. Once the batteries get very, very low, there's a sensor on it well, which will detect that it's reaching almost its full usage, which will kick in the generator on this end. Automatic start. The whole bottom of the unit is the diesel, where the diesel tank gets filled up. It's always checked, always ready to go. That kicks in before the batteries kick out. Charges the battery, keeps everything running. Here are the main power disconnects, and this is the power transfer switch. This is what will switch it from the main outside power to the generator. The batteries will keep the unit running long enough for this thing to switch. It's very, very fast, but the batteries act like a home UPS type of sort of thing. This here is 
the fiber unit. This is the new addition they're putting over here. This comes from FPNL's FiberNet. So they're switching from one service to another. This unit brings the fiber optic in and converts it back into a T1, which is what these units recognize, as you can tell, over here. And then it goes right into the data box that we showed you earlier, converts it, voila! Little tamper switch over here, keeps it running, and of course, nothing like a nice beehive, wasp hive, to make your work hazardous. Interior of the generator, the controller test box set to automatic. They can check the services, the gauges, but once a week, what is it, running once a week or once a week it gets a test run to make sure that the motor doesn't seize and everything's working in place. There's your muffler. It's like a miniature truck engine, diesel. That thing has enough juice to power the tower. You know how long this one can run the tower for? Uh, uh, three days without refueling. Incredible. Not too bad. Over here you'll see the two antennas. Those are actually GPS antennas. It keeps the unit incredibly accurate because cell towers only go for a few mile radius. So what happens is when you're driving and you go to the next tower and does the handoff, which that's not controlled here. This just controls this one tower. The timing has to be precise.